this um, elephant seal, this mesh, has um, been shown to work pretty well to keep them out, even though physically they could totally get through it if they wanted to. But it goes all the way around this whole area. And on the other side, you can see it, it weaves through all the way until it connects to the bridge fence under there. And that's all to keep them off the road, to keep them safe, and to keep the public safe. Um, so we're standing at... And um, we are standing at a Royal Del Corral. It's photo location four. <laughs> and the very first picture, which is dated July 2017, that's the culvert that used to be here. It's on the left. That picture is what the culvert used to look like and used to be here. And then you can see January of this last year, 2018, what it looked like, and then you can see what it looks like now. So I can give this back to you. And then on the next side, you can see what it looked like from the other direction. If you were standing on the beach and looking back towards the, uh, the bridge, you can see the, you know, what the difference was from when the culvert was there and when it wasn't. And this was our most challenging location, partly because of the elephant seals. Um, we thought we were really smart and we put in an exclusion fence and the exclusion fence went around here uh, a little you know just a little bit further west and we thought we were in good shape and it held up okay and then we got a huge storm and the contractor had put in wood posts and all those wood posts went <laughs> and started floating and we had about elephant seals in this creek frolicking <laughs> with this floating fence <laughs> and it was kind of a it was a big um uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could have been worse but it was all fine all the elephant seals were fine we were able to get the fence out but that was our first that was a good omen for how challenging the elephant seals would become <laughs> um so we let them have it that year we said forget it we can't do anything about it we let them have it until the spring and then that next spring is when we had to shoo a couple of young ones out of those willows out back there we had to get them out um, with the help of um, the NOAA folks the National Marine Fisheries people came out to help us um, we also this creek is also the creek that has uh, potential steelhead habitat here it also, this beach historically was snowy plover habitat. The elephant seals um, has basically um, caused loss of snowy plover habitat because they ruin any nest that would potentially be on the sand. What jerks! <laughs> and the elephant seals, since we're on an elephant seal. <laughs> the elephant seals this creek was not nearly this wide. So when I started working on this project, we would have like maybe one male, maybe two males, and that got kind of bruised and battered on the um, breeding grounds. And they would come here to recover. And so occasionally we would get one or two males that would hang out here. But there was nothing like you see now. And there's nothing like you'll see in a couple months. There's, I think, uh, I want to say maybe close to a thousand that end up on this beach. But when I first started, there were only a few, and so we didn't really think it was a big deal. But then by the time we got into construction, their population had continued to exponentially um, increase. And so they have taken down the edges of this creek pretty dramatically because they, they brush up against it. And when they're thrashing around, they're creating waves. And so parts of these banks have sort of slept off. Sea lion erosion. I mean, elephant, elephant seal erosion. erosion. Elephant seal erosion. Yeah. I tried to make the case. That's a good category. The waterboard on that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't us. Yeah. Um, so one other thing I want to mention is Caltrans did uh, paid a, a good sum of money <laughs> to the contractor when he built these bridges. Not the, not this one so much, but the other one that you can't see right now, and the one to the north. And I think that picture might be in your pa packet. We, we built the bridges from a trestle, which means the wetlands underneath we felt were so valuable that we didn't want them to 
to get equipment in there and to change the soil, to compact it. And so we didn't let them in at all except for foot traffic. And so they had to build these bridges from a platform that they built to the side of the bridge. So they would, they would put out a wooden platform and then they would build the bridge from the platform. So it cost more money and it took more time, but the quality of the wetlands and the waters underneath that bridge is so amazing. It looks like nobody was ever there. It's really, it's, it, I wish that we had ability to con get you all over there to see it, but you can see it in your packet. Sorry, yeah. I keep grabbing that. Um, it is photo location two, photo location one and two. So you can see there was no bridge in 2010 when this picture was taking place and then the bridge in March 2018 was there. Um, they built that bridge with, um, like I said, with a trestle. So if you go under that bridge, you can barely tell there was um, active construction going on. Because when they build a bridge, what they have to do is they, this kind of soil, they would take out that soil because it's not good to work on. So they would remove the soil and then they would place gravel, sand, things to make it firm. And that is very challenging to get back up when you're done with the project. That basically gets in the ground, it compacts the ground, and it's really hard to restore. And so that's why we ask that they find another way to build the bridges. Um, do you guys have any questions? Because otherwise I'll just keep going. What are they doing behind you? Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> So, this was the, we are standing on the old road, here. This is where the culvert was, this big open space, and then the road would keep going south. That, we had to take out the fill there, because this road was, uh, the road prism is, is built up around it, and so we took all that soil out, and we are trying to, to get these wetlands here, to basically grow and spread into the old roadbed. So this is part of our mitigation. This is what we call our on-site mitigation. And they are taking, uh, they are taking shovels and they are going about eight inches deep and they're getting all around it and taking that whole piece of sod. And then they are um, digging holes in the old roadbed and plopping those pieces inside. So most of this wetland vegetation has the ability, it's, uh, it's rhizominous, so it, um, it's like a straw, some of it's like a strawberry plant where it sends shoots out and then it, it can, it'll move and revegetate in, in a new location. And so a lot of this vegetation will do that. So we are putting all these plants in, I think there's like 2,000, which is a lot, it's a huge undertaking. Um, but we're really excited. It's supposed to rain on Wednesday, and I know you guys must be really excited too. Um, <laughs> Woo! Even, mud slides! Yay! Next, uh, <laughs> shoot, I didn't think that's that. all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Put a, well, it's a relative question. Depends if your house is underneath it or not. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think every time I open my mouth about that. I just... <laughs> not working out so we're excited for the rain here uh, because uh, although the watering is helping there's nothing like natural rain to really get things moving and, and if this all gets wet it ponds where those men are on the far side it actually ponds and red-legged frogs breed in that pond um, and so we're hoping to kind of uh, improve their breeding area by creating some low spots in here with some native vegetation. Oh, sorry. That's a great question. I don't know. 